Alright, lesson 4.5, equivalent forms of the equation of a quadratic function. In this lesson, what we're going to look at is quadratic functions that are in general form and try to uh, put them into standard form. In the last lesson, 4.4, what you would have learned is that when things are in standard form, uh, the y equals a onto x minus p all squared plus q, it's a little bit easier to interpret the, uh, the graph and to gather characteristics from it. So, let's get started. When the equation of a quadratic function is in a general form, So that would be y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Most characteristics of the graph cannot be identified. For this reason, what we're going to do is we're going to convert from general form to standard form by completing the square. Now, completing the square, that's something that we actually played around with a little bit in 3.3. Uh, in so the good news is, you guys will have seen some of this before. All right. So if I mosey down to my first example right here. This is example one. Determine the coordinates of the vertex of the parabola with equation y equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 7. Now, when we complete the square, hopefully you recall, that what we always want to start out with first is trying to uh, factor out the leading coefficient in front of the x squared. So if it's, if it's a negative, you're going to factor that out. For this time, we just have a 3. So I'm going to factor out a 3. So I have 3 x squared minus, since I've taken the 3 out of the first two terms, this will become a 4x. Now, don't take it out of the last term. Even if you can, I don't want you to. So we'll just leave it like so. Now what we do is we take that negative 4x term and we're going to divide it by 2 and then square it. So if we divide it by 2, we have negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. So we have plus 4 minus 4. Now the reason we can get away with this is because we haven't really changed anything. You see I've added 4 and I've subtracted 4. That doesn't change uh, really what it's worth. It just changes kind of how it looks. So now from there, I can go and try to get it in the form of completing the square. In order to do this, what I need to do is I need to take out this negative 4. All right? So take out that negative 4. I'm going to multiply it by the leading coefficient. That's the 3. And so it'll pop outside of the brackets and turn into a negative 12. From here now, what I'll go and do is I'll gather my like terms. So the negative 12 and the positive 7, that gives me a negative 5. And I'm almost finished. Now I'll complete the square. So I put an x here. Put a square it out here. And to complete the square, what we're always going to do is you can take this middle term, the negative 4, and divide it by 2. So that gives me negative 2. Or you can take the 4 on the outside and uh, take the square root of it, and it'll give you the 2. Okay, whatever sign you have right here will be the sign that you have, like so. Now, if I go back to this question, what it was asking for was the vertex. So the vertex is actually staring me right in the face right here. The vertex is going to be whatever you have right here and here. So it'll always be x, y. All right. but what I want you to think of is, for this uh, negative 2 right here, you're always going to take the opposite as to what you see. So if I saw a negative 2, then I'm going to take a 2. And then the negative 5, you just take it as it looks. All right. So 2, negative 5 would be the vertex of that parabola. All right. So that's the first example. If we head on to the next page, example 2. What we're going to try and do now is we're going to try to determine the equation of the axis of symmetry this time. So if you think about it, really I can just do the exact same uh, thing I just did in that last question because let's say I have a parabola like so. Okay? If I find out what the vertex is right here, well, it's just going to be the x coordinate that I really need to play with uh, in order to find what the axis of symmetry is. Because if you look, the axis of symmetry just is whatever x coordinate that point is like so. All right, so that's what I'm going to do with this question right here. And this one gets a little bit more daunting because we have some uh, uh, decimals and fractions we're going to have to deal with. So uh, I'll show you what I mean. y is equal to, I'm going to factor out the leading coefficient to a negative 2 this time. It gives me negative 2 x squared plus, oops, minus 2.5 x minus 3. All right, so I factored out negative 2 from the first two terms. Notice how that negative 2.5 uh, went negative because you had to get the positive, like so. So now what I'll do is I'm going to take that negative 2.5, and I'm going to need to divide it by 2 and then square it. So when I divide by 2 and square, we'll see what happens here. So I'll get out my calculator. I'll take negative 2.5, and I'm going to divide it by 2. So you get some type of a decimal. All right, and then I'm going to take that solution and square it. 
right, so what I get is 1. So I'll go plus 1.5625, and then we're going to also subtract the 1.5625. All right, like so. So I haven't changed what it's worth, just changed kind of what it looks like. Now that last term, this negative 1.5625, I'm going to pop it outside the brackets. But what you have to remember is that you're going to have to multiply by this leading coefficient, the negative 2 here. So I have negative 2 brackets x squared minus 2.5x plus the 1.5625. So that part's all ready for me to complete the square. But now I need to take that decimal that I have right here, and I will multiply it by the 2. All right. So when you multiply the 2, you get the 3.125. I didn't include the, the negatives, but a negative times a negative gives you a positive. So it's going to be plus 3.125 minus 3. All right, so now I'm ready to go and complete the square here. I will have an x. I will have a squared. These guys gathered together to just give me plus 0 0.125. That would be my y-intercept or my uh, y-coordinate of the vertex. And so from here, now all I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this middle term and divide it by 2. And when you divide that by 2, you'll just have 1.25. All right. So what that tells me is that's going to be my axis of symmetry. Now again, you take the opposite value. So the axis of symmetry is always x is equal to whatever you get right there. So in this uh, circumstance, it's going to be 1.25. Now this question, you'll have noticed that I used decimals. You could have gone and used fractions. That would have been fine. For instance, you could have found that your final answer here is x is equal to 5 quarters. I normally find with students, they're a little bit more confident dealing with uh, decimals than fractions. So that's why I chose to go this way. All right. So it makes no difference uh, to me. Uh, it's your guys' call. But example three, determine the y-coordinate of the vertex of the graph. y equals 1 fifth x squared plus 2x minus 1. Now we've had ones like this before where we have a fraction in front. We're just going to factor it out. And remember, the whole goal of this is what we're trying to do is put it into that format uh, that we have, which is y is equal to a onto x minus p all squared plus q. And the q, of course, is your y-coordinate of the vertex. So that's where we're going to try to head. So we'll start out by writing out the question. We have y is equal to 1 fifth x squared plus 2x minus 1. I'm going to factor out the 1 fifth. Okay, you could have changed it to a decimal if that made you uh, a little bit more comfortable. So this becomes x squared. This is where it's sometimes a little uh, confusing for students. Remember, if you're taking out a 1 fifth, what you're actually doing is you're going to multiply everything inside by 5. And I'll show you what I mean. This becomes a 10x like so. And how you can check that you've done that right, if you take 1 fifth and you multiply it by 10x right here, you'll get to the 2x. From here now, I have the 1 fifth, and now I'm going to try to set up uh, my brackets here so that I complete the square. I take the plus 10x, I'm going to divide it by 2 and then square it. So dividing by 2 gives me 5. 5 squared is 25, so I have plus 25, minus 25, minus 1. Now I'm going to take out that last term in my brackets here. That part's all ready for me to complete the square. So when I take out the negative 25, negative 25 times the 1 fifth is the same as dividing by 5. It's going to give me a negative 5 minus the 1. Now I'm all ready to go and complete my square. I got the x there. I put the squared in. Negative 5 and negative 1 is negative 6. And you're pretty much done. You don't actually even need to complete the square here. But uh, for kicks, what you do is just take that term and divide it by 2. So you have x plus. All right. Now keep in mind that the question was asking what is the y coordinate of the vertex, and the y coordinate of the vertex is just staring you in the face right there. All right. So you just answer the y coordinate of the vertex is negative 6. So I've showed you a couple different ways um, that we go about looking for, for different information. We've looked for the x uh, coordinate of the vertex, the y coordinate of the vertex, and the um, axis of symmetry. Okay. So again, we're using our completing the square uh, technique in order to do this. That concludes this lesson.